Hey guys, Jamil here from Run Steep Get High, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my eight essential items that I would be carrying at the Barkley Marathons if it was happening this month. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video for your chance to win not only an autographed version of the Frozen Head State Park map, but also these awesome stickers that I got on my training runs this year in Frozen Head. All right, let's start off with my pack of choice that I wear at the Barkley. This pack is not only good for the Barkley marathons, but it's honestly typically something I wear on my longer adventure runs or almost any run that I'm gonna be carrying camera equipment with me uh, while I'm filming for this YouTube channel. So here we have the Solomon Advanced Skin 12 Set Pack. This is a 12 liter pack. It retails for $165 from Solomon. It has a, a ex, really an expandable area, so you've got a large zippered pack here in the back. This is typically where I'm putting my extra map and my extra compass for the race, as well as some other supplies I have here I'll talk about in a minute, as well as extra gloves, layers, and food supplies. Those are things I don't need to access all the time, but let's say I just pulled a page from a book and I'm taking a short break. I'm gonna take my pack off and open that up. Let's go to the front of the pack here. We've got um, a couple of pouches up here. There's actually this one here. I don't usually use this one. It's not super secure. It doesn't have a zipper enclosure, but just the pressure of being on, you can actually put something in there that um, maybe is not gonna be a big deal if you lose it. Now you've got two bottle spaces up here. Now they take the Solomon soft flasks. I'll be using those often. I love having my hydration up front. It's easy access, allows me to fill up when I'm out there on the trails. Now let's move up. Below this hydration sleeve pocket here, you've got a larger one. Now I can fit my whole hand, and it's a very, very stretchy fabric, so you can really pack a lot into this. I'll usually put all of my nutrition in here, sometimes a headlamp, things that I'm gonna be needing at all times. The other unique part about this is on the outside of this large mesh area, there's actually a zippered pocket that is equally as big. So you can put your, I can put my whole hand in there and it's that same stretchy fabric. So not only can you put things behind it inside in the loose pouch area, but you can actually secure things via a zipper and you're gonna be guaranteed that that's not gonna fall out. Now for me, I'm putting my map which at Barkley is critical that you don't lose, as well as my pages bag. So, you know, at the Barkley, we are going and using these books as checkpoints. We tear the page out and we have to keep that not only waterproof so it doesn't disintegrate, but also safe. So I always make sure I have a dedicated pocket, usually just for my map on one side and the other side uh, is my critical pages bag. There are a number of cinch Enclosures here, how this actually tightens is there is a, a loop fastening system. You just loop it over and it slips right in and it locks down as well. And there's two of those on the front, locks in nice and tight. And then you can use this toggle and drawstring to cinch it down. I've found that as long as you have stuff in your pack, even if it's not very much stuff, as long as you get the right size, you can cinch it down pretty tight. Now moving to the bottom of the pack, there is a loop back here that I've actually used to secure my poles in the past or also rolled up a rain jacket. Moving on to my second item of the day. Now this is more of a wilderness preparedness item. And at the Barkley, it's super important to have something like this. This is a thermal blanket from Life Systems. This is something that is going to keep your body heat in if you stop moving and need to hunker down for a while. The Barkley has no aid stations on course and you need to be self-sufficient for anywhere from eight to 15 hours at a time. Imagine the weather changes that can happen in that time period. You're gonna wanna make sure that you can survive out there and you don't have to quit because you got too cold. The Barkley also doesn't have a great tracking system. They really don't know where anyone is at out there. So it's, it's extra critical that you're prepared for survival out in the woods. This is something that I would actually recommend people carry at more things than they do. This weighs almost nothing. It's just a few ounces. It packs flat. You can stash it in the back of your pack. You won't even notice it's there, but in case of inclement weather, rain, anything like that, at least you know you can survive. You could have an instance where you break a leg, you don't have cell service, and you have to spend the night out in the woods. What are you gonna do? Are you prepared? This is a great backup plan and a little insurance policy. These only cost a few dollars. Highly recommend checking it. Next up, let's talk navigation. Now, most trail runners don't have to worry about a compass 
I actually carry at least two at the Barkley, usually a third backup as well. This right here is the Sunto M3 compass. This is more of your traditional compass that you would use if you're out orienteering or you're out just using a map in the wilderness. A lot of us have become so dependent upon our cell phones, but what happens when they don't work? What happens when the battery dies? You drop it, you crack the screen, and you can't use it anymore. Not a bad skill to have to know which direction you're heading. This one has a simple uh, loop around it here. You can hang it around your neck. I oftentimes will wear this during the race. It fits right under the strap in my pack, so it doesn't really bounce around. You just tuck it in, and I can easily pull it up, set my compass bearing, turn to north, and I can see and pick my line of sight point. Uh, if you guys want more information on using a compass, please comment and let me know. I can do a dedicated video on uh, how to do that. Next up, this is a new development. Last year, my friend Guillaume, when we were out training, he was wearing a wrist compass. So this is essentially a smaller version of this. This is the Sunto M9 wrist compass, and it's literally something that you can wear around your wrist. So this simply fits around your wrist. It has a Velcro strap and locks down, and this isn't going anywhere. I'm not gonna have this caught on a briar and ripped off that's happened to people or put in my pack and it falls out when I'm trying to get a nutrition bar or something. It's always gonna be there. Now this one's kind of cool. If you look through a viewfinder here, you can actually just literally with line of sight look through and I can see that I'm, I'm looking at uh, 90 degrees right here. So literally just do a quick spot check and see what bearing you're heading. All right, for the nighttime sections, which can be significant at the Barkley, you really don't don't know what time it's gonna start. And oftentimes on a loop, at some point it will be dark, either at the beginning, middle, or end of the lap. This is the headlamp I like to use. A lot of times I actually prefer to use a Kagala raw light. That is something that has a battery pack and has a ton of light. For something like the Barkley, I'm using poles typically, which I'll get to in a second, but I need to wear a headlamp. So I've been going with the Black Diamond Icon. These retail for $99.95. Now this is the 500 lumen version. They've since upgraded, now have a 700 lumen. So if I were doing Barkley this year, I would definitely be upgrading to the 700 lumen version. Just give you that extra amount of light. Can't wait to pick that up and, and give it a shot. Now it has a waterproof battery pack on it. It does require four AA batteries. I always use lithium ion. They're the lightest and longest lasting. I can get through almost a whole night on a pretty high setting. Oftentimes I will turn the setting lower when I'm climbing and then bump it up if I need to look for a bearing uh, or have that additional amount of light when I'm navigating. So the cool thing about this battery pack is it does come with an extension cable, as you can see. It can either be worn directly clipped on to your head, but if you don't want that extra weight, you can just stash this in your pack, and that's what I typically do. Just a quick note, a link for all these products will be available down in the description. You guys can check them out and pick some up for yourself. Moving right along. So typically I wear a Sunto watch for GPS. Those are not allowed at the Barkley. So this right here is actually one of, it might be last year's watch, so we get a race provided watch. I don't know what the model is. It is a generic digital sports watch. I believe that Laz picked them up from Walmart for about $10 each. This is water resistant to 400 meters. Definitely important at the Barkley as we have plenty of water out there typically. And he sets these to Barkley time. What's Barkley time you ask? Well, it's the start of the race that would be 12 midnight or 0000, and it counts up from there. So we typically will get these watches after he blows the conch shell within an hour before the race start. They're still in their packaging. We have to unpackage them. And uh, this is our only watch available to us during the race, and it doesn't even show time of day. Something that is critically important is a map. So this map is available at the Frozen Head State Natural Area Visitor Center. It, it costs, I think, $3 and some change. It is not waterproof. This one does not have the Barkley course on it. It is literally as they come from the park, but this is the park map. It is a topographical. It has all of the streams, contour lines, mountain peak tops, and all of the park trails are in red. So this is the basic outline of the map that we're using, that we're carrying with us. Laz will put out the map for us of, this, of each year's course the night before, and we have to draw it in ourselves. So it's a little arts and crafts time with some markers and pens, and then I'm always sure to use clear tape and waterproof my map. 
as well as make multiple copies. If you guys want a chance to win this exact map along with those stickers, stay tuned. We're gonna talk about how to enter that contest here in just a minute. All right, my eighth product that I like to use for the Barkley, these are essential. I haven't always carried poles for all loops of the Barkley, but I can tell you as an experienced veteran that you want poles. So these are the Black Diamond Distance Carbon Z poles. They fold into three sections. Many of you have probably seen these before. They are connected with these uh, little joints. It's almost like ligaments and it actually will click together if you just slide it down and there is a little button that pops out and so now you have a totally secure pole that is ready to go. This one has quite a bit of use on it already but as you can see it's been handling it pretty well. I use these at the training runs this year. I use it in training just here at home and I always pack for the Barkley. These are nice that they collapse down as there are times when you're running on normal trails you don't really want anything in your hands and I can actually stash it through these loops in the bottom of my pack if I want or just hold them in my hand. All right, the moment you guys have been waiting for, if you guys want to win these stickers and an autographed Frozen Head State Park map, check it out. This is a really cool sticker of the fire tower and this is one that says you either know or you don't with a yellow gate icon, Frozen Head State Park as well as this awesome map. If you guys want to have a chance to win these, join our Run Steep Get High email list. We'll have a link at the top of our description below. We'll have those entries opened through March 21st this Saturday. So if you guys are watching this video, be sure to subscribe. We'll be sending out updates on all of our upcoming media and content. We're gonna be really ramping up our video production right now. Please also comment below on videos you want to see. This is just an example of a gear type video that we can make, but we'd love to hear from you. What do you guys want to see? Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Be sure to subscribe, and hopefully you're all doing well out there. If you guys want a way to support our channel and the work we're doing here with all of these running videos, check out our shop, runsteep.com. We've got all kinds of awesome merchandise. This zip up hoodie I'm wearing right here, this hat, We've also got a lot of these in stock. We've got everything that we have currently. It's all updated on our website. We've got some awesome gear for you guys to check out as you're training. And be sure to tag us if you're wearing our gear out on the trails, out on some peaks, and we'll be sure to repost on our Instagram page.